Hello and thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and to talk to you all about uh, Nox3. Uh, one of my favorite features is the fact that you can go from Nox2 to Nox3 without having to rewrite your entire application or, or dump all the features you already have access to in Nox2 and then start afresh again because you want to get uh, all the benefits of Nox3. And that is what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I like the fact that we have the Nox bridge that helps us bridge the gap between Nox, uh, Nox 2 and Nox 3. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you all about today and hopefully also show you how to get uh, started with it. Uh, so before I go any further, my name is Ekene Eze. I'm a developer experience engineer at Netlify. And I have a YouTube channel where I talk about the Jamstack and uh, general web development practices. You can find me on Twitter and anywhere else on social media at Kenny underscore IO. Uh, so let's get started with the things we'll talk about today. I will take a quick look at Nox2 uh, and then we'll talk about some Nox3 features that I care about, that I like. And then I'll show you how to bridge the gap between the two of them. And I also want this friendship on screen right now. All right, so uh, before we started talking about Nox3, we've all been well, I, I'm guessing we've all been uh, building with Nox2 and Nox2 came with a lot of awesome features that had that, that I, I was really excited about at the time. Uh, we were able to do things with Nox content module, we were able to do things, optimize images and uh, all our media assets in Nox2 with the Nox image component. Uh, we had fetch and listening data to fetch data. We had uh, server side rendering with a node server within our Nox2 applications and so on and so forth. It was amazing. I think it still is. I mean, all of my applications, uh, all of my Nox applications are still on Nox2 and I'm pretty much still using them as of today. Uh, so I have no problems with that uh, whatsoever. Uh, but like everything else, uh, but like everything else in tech, there's always advancements and enhancements and optimizations and new versions coming out every day. Uh, so today we have Nox3, which gives us even more extended features to do things uh, uh, easily. We have five times smaller deployment bundle which means if you're deploying your Nox3 application it's going to be way smaller the bundle size uh, compared to if you had exactly the same application uh, but with Nox2. So we have the Nox kit for creating cross version modules, we have multiple rendering modes that are available in Nox3 out of the box, you have incremental static generation, you have server side rendering, static generation, all the awesome things that uh, makes it possible for you to choose which mode and which uh, which that makes it possible for you to choose which rendering mode you want to go with. We have a new CLI tool in Nox3. It's called Noxy that helps us to quickly scaffold new projects and uh, and help us with module integrations. But that's not even all, right? We also have things like composition APIs and composable functions. Literally, Nox3 gives us access to all the View3 features. Uh, which is just like awesome uh, because we now can fetch data with suspense. Uh, the, the, your Nox3 applications will be built with a combination of uh, Vite and, and Webpack 5. You have TypeScript support out of the box and so on and so forth. That's as much as I can fit on screen. Uh, but I'm sure you know we have uh, a lot of, of features coming out with Nox3 being the biggest release uh, from Nox3 so far. So, uh, but if I'm a Nox developer and I've been reading with Nox2. At this point, reading all of these features, seeing all the amazing things that Nox3 offers, I'm starting to get worried a little bit, right? Like, okay, so how do I get all of these awesome new things into my Nox2 application, right? I want it, right? I want it to be small, I want it to be faster, I want to get access to V3 uh, and all of those things. Uh, like, that's how I felt until I heard about the Nox bridge, right? Which is a Nox module that allows you to get Nox3 features into your Nox2 application. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. With the Nox bridge, you can get access to the Nitro engine, which is a feature of Nox3 that gives us enhanced performances and serverless support in Nox applications. We get access to ESM modules, built-in TypeScript support, all the composition API uh, goodies, and so on and so forth. So uh, it's safe to say that you want to go, uh, we're well not really go from this to that, but more like you want to get access to the features in Nox3 while in your Nox2 application. So Nox Bridge is going to help us do that 
and that is what I'd like to show you all next. Uh, so right here, I have a Nox2 application. As you can see, it's called the Bridge Demo uh, because I made it for this demonstration. At the moment, we are still on uh, Nox2.15 and um, all our scripts are still uh, Nox2 scripts and all of that. There's nothing. Actually, let's go ahead and, and run this up just so that I have the opportunity to show you what it looks like. Okay, and then I think that's working right here. I'm going to close this one up. So this is the, the docs application. It's just a head a store. Basically, this is the home page. And if I go to the shop route, it's going to show me a list of the products that I have in store. And if I click into any of the products, I should get a product page where I can uh, select quantity and add to cart. And that's it, right? Very simple, straightforward application. Uh, if I go through the pages, you will see that it's just a shop and then we have an index page and the shop has the dynamic route and the index page as well for the shop. Uh, so what I want to do is go ahead and uh, add Nox Bridge to this application so that I can go ahead and uh, use the Nox3 features that we all know and, and have talked about inside of my Nox2 application. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is install uh, Nox3, which is currently Nox Edge. So I'm just going to get rid of Nox2 and put in Nox Edge and latest version and save that. So I can go ahead and stop the server, clear it up and do yarn so that I can install the, the Nox Edge dependency that we just added in package.json. And while that's going on, the next thing we want to do is add the Nox Bridge itself, which is uh, a package that we are going to install as a dev dependency. And it will show up right here when we're done. Now that we've installed Nox3, it's time to install uh, Nox Bridge. So I'll paste in the command. Uh, you can find this command on the on the Nox, uh, Nox bridge documentation. Maybe I'll get to it on the on, on stream very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, you don't have to memorize it. It's uh, available on the documentation. So uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is very uh, visible to people. I think in the meantime, I'm going to rewrite the browser okay, so that the terminal is is clearly visible. So that's the command yarn add uh, dash dash dev nox bridge at npm nox bridge edge. Uh, I'll, I'll show I'll, I'll make sure I, I put in the, the documentation on the screen so that you can see the commands for yourself. So while that's going on, uh, the next thing we want to do is update our script in package.json so that when we run a script, we are using the new CLI tool, uh, which is noxy, as opposed to running uh, nox scripts. So I will, that's done. So I will uh, change this from Noxt to Noxy. And then I will do dev. Uh, the same for the build command. If this is Noxt, I'll do Noxy build. Uh, and the last one that I want to change is the generate command. Uh, this will be Noxy generate. And that's because uh, in my Nox config, you, I am setting my targets to be static. So I'm definitely going to need to generate command and I'm changing it to Noxy generate. Uh, so that's the ones I care about now. Uh, I'm not going to touch the stats uh, because I won't be needing it for this project. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is update the Nox config file. At the moment, it looks like this. Uh, we are still doing export default and putting all our configurations inside. If you're using Nox3, as we are going to be doing now, you will need to have this configuration set like this. You will need uh, something else. Let me get that. And I'm going to put it right here. You're going to use uh, define Nox config, and then everything else I had before can come into it. So I'll cut that out. Take this out, and right here, I can put all of these existing configurations that I already had. 
Uh, so instead of using export default now, we're using the define Nox config uh, that we got from, from Nox page. And that should be it. So if I save that, uh, I think at this point, I could probably uh, give this project a spin. So I have Nox Edge, I have Nox Bridge, I have uh, the final config in my Nox configuration. So that's probably it. Uh, let's let's give this a shot again. I'll go ahead and now do Yandev again. And hopefully now we're using the Nox CLI. Yay, look at that. Uh, well, that's that's a very, the very first indication that we're doing that we're doing the right things, right? Uh, we're using Noxy now to, to, and we're using Nitro as well. All right, cool. So it looks like we are making headway. Uh, so far, so good, I think. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and restart this project again and see if I'll get the fancy. Oh no, I did not because it did not build. It's kind of like already there, which is. Pretty fast, if you ask me. Um, okay, I'll check the shop, and it's all through there. All right, to make sure, I'm just going to go ahead and play around with this. Let me close this out. I'm going to come to the index page and try to use uh, I don't know, Logs three, for instance, right? I'm going to add a script set up here and try and use uh, ref and reactive just to be sure that this is working as as i expect so i'm going to import no, no definitely not RRF. from view and i'm going to do that count to ref and zero good uh so i can come where should I put it? I, I, I'll put it here. And I'll just do a P and show the count. Then I can put a button. Uh huh, that's what I want. Cool. So I'll save this. Hopefully, now I have a button on my. Yep, and if I click on the button, the count should go up. Yay! Look at that. So now we have our view three working inside our Nox two application, which is amazing. It means that our Nox bridge is working exactly as we want it to, right? Um, ordinarily, you won't have access to Ref because it's a view three feature inside of your Nox two application. Uh, but this is just like me trying to to verify that the Nox bridge is working. And it seems to be. Uh, but that's not all we, we're going to be talking about. Actually, uh, since this application is built uh, with Nox 2 and some Nox 2 features, as we can see in the shop, uh, we are using Nox 2 here to get products, uh, use uh, fetch to get the responses, and all that. Let's try and see if we can if we can use Nox 3 here instead. I'm going off on a limb, I'm going to expect it to work, but if it doesn't, you all will bear me witness while that happens. Uh, so let's try and see if we can get uh, Nox 3 working here instead. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is actually maybe just clean out all of this. Uh, um, this is, I'm going to see what uh, the kind of data that this sends me back. Because I'm thinking at this point, maybe we should also uh, play around with the. Okay, that's good. I'm thinking maybe instead of uh, getting this uh, shop data from the from this API, maybe I can make a server uh, folder in this Nox application to also see if we can get the Nox tree uh, server API routes working as well, right? Uh, but let's let's. Uh, Get this set up first. I can get all of this out of the way. Uh, methods also out of the way. Actually, let me get it all out of the way. So what I want to do first is import 
Ja, mach mal schön schnell. From view. And then I'm going to do first stage. In reactive. And that will give us um product. No, not first, just products. And that will be an empty array. Cool. The next thing I want to do when I have that is make the function that will actually fetch the products that we need. But I'd like to show you how to use server routes in Nox3. Uh, so I need to go ahead and create a new folder on, in the root and call it server. And inside the server, I'm going to make a new file. Well, actually, I need to make another folder so that it's an API folder. And in there, I can make a new file and let's call it products.js. Of course, what I'm trying to do is instead of uh, fetching uh, the data from the API uh, endpoints that we saw before, we could uh, make our own API right here within this application. It's also a very nice feature that, that Nox3 presents that I'd like to show, uh, show how to use. Uh, so let's go ahead and do export default async function. That's it. And instead of doing any logic here, I'm just going to send back uh, the data that I want. And that is 200. No, I'm just going to send back the data. And it's going to be, let me get that data for you. It's exactly the same data we go back from the, from the endpoint. Just that now I'm specifying it right here in my notes application. So if I save this, I think my, yeah, that's still running. So if I come here, and go to forward slash API forward slash products. I should now get all the data back. Awesome. So I can make my requests to this endpoint as opposed to calling uh, the other endpoints I had before. Cool. Uh, so all right then. Let's let's do that. Right. Uh, so instead of doing what I, I did before, I can make an unmounted hook. Fantastic! Would you look at that? Uh, this is also why, why I like uh, Copilot. It kind of like just makes my job easy for me. Uh, so now I have an unmounted hook. I'm making a call to our product endpoint. I'm getting a response and I'm updating uh, the data we have in state. So right here, instead of having uh, Instead of doing product in products, I can do a product in state the products so that I get exactly the same thing I had back before. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, create the function that we used in, in the previous uh, version, which is this shortened function uh, to kind of like uh, truncate the, the the description of the product so it's not it doesn't put the entire thing on screen basically. Uh, previously we had it as this function. Under the methods object, we have this uh, shortened function that just um, returns us a text that is not too long, basically. So let's go ahead and write that function now. And I'm going to call it shortened just again. I have I have a feeling our copilot is going to try to do it for me. There you go. But no, I I'm going to type this out myself. You know what? Why why do I have to do that? I mean I'm already running low on time, so let's just go ahead and. Uh, and accept the help. Uh, so right away we have uh, the two things we had before. We had our state object that will give us the product which we can use uh, right here. And we have the shortened function which we already defined down below. So if I save this, I'm hoping that nothing breaks uh, so far so good. And that will be amazing, right? Because I've gone from Nox2 to Nox3 in just a couple of seconds or minutes so save this and fingers crossed i think we've brought this to a very good place so let's test this out 
Uh, if I do click me, our reactive and ref variables works as expected. If I move over to shop, I should see that I'm still getting all the data back uh, from the API. And if I go to view products, I am in fact still getting it all uh, the way I want it. Uh, so this is just uh, a quick demonstration of how you can add Nuxt Bridge to your Nuxt 2 applications to give you access to Nuxt 3 features and all of that. Obviously, there are some uh, features of Nuxt 3 that you can't get uh, from Nuxt Bridge. I'm not sure if this is one of them, uh, but according to the documentation, if you do change this uh, to square brackets, well, I'm not sure if that's what it's called, uh, like this, then uh, you should this should still be able to work as expected. I'm not sure this is available on the Nox Bridge. I'm sure if you build a brand new Nox Tree application, that's going to be the case. Uh, but right now, it doesn't work yet uh, amongst other things. So I'm not trying to tell you to go ahead and, and port all of your applications over to, uh, to Nox uh to nox tree using nox bridge uh evidently there are some features that might not work yet out of the box uh but it's safe to say that you can use all of the view three features that i've uh, i've just shown you uh so far let's try this just to show you that it doesn't work yep that's why uh so at the moment uh you still have to use dynamic routes the same way that we've always used it which is using that underscore slug and that should get you fixed up that's the only thing that i've uh, found out that uh, doesn't work uh, over the nox bridge uh, but i'm sure if you do your own investigations there could be some other things uh, but otherwise nox bridge is amazing as as we've all seen i've gone ahead and and ported this project from nox 2 to nox 3 uh, just in a couple of minutes so i'll go back to my presentation and and now that we're done with that demo, uh, I want to bring the presentation to a conclusion and I'm summarizing with the fact that you have the ability uh, to enjoy Noctree features in your Noctu applications using the Nox bridge. It is uh, well documented. The ease of migration, as you can see, is just to uh, install Nox Edge and Nox bridge and you are good to go. Not every feature is available over the Nox bridge yet, as I've shown you the dynamic routes uh, doesn't exactly work out of the box yet. Uh, so you have to be careful what you're doing, uh, the features you're going for, and that's it. And that said, uh, thank you all for having me. Once again, my name is Ekene and I'm on uh, Twitter at Kenny underscore IO. So feel free to shoot me any questions, any DMs, and I will be happy to help you out. Thank you all once again and bye.